Photographer Colin Legg specializes in landscape astrophotography. You'll know it when you see it. I'm interested in finding vistas which get me off the planet, vistas of untouched landscapes at night. And by day... I'm a geologist, but I work in a data management company for geological data. Legg's photography takes him to remote places in Australia, where he lives, and around the world. And just consider for a moment what might be required to capture this time-lapsed starry night. It's for IMAX, so this sequence needed to be at much higher resolution than just your typical DSLR. Legg uses a Canon 5D Mark II for you shutterflies out there. But one camera wouldn't give him enough pixels for that supersized IMAX screen. We have multiple cameras operating together and then stitch those images into a seamless image. That means every 30 seconds, those five cameras snapped in synchrony. The added complication then was that I had to actually track the light through the day and the night. To get the correct exposure. And I had to do that out uh, in the middle of Western Australia on a lake bed because um, we didn't want any obstacles on the horizon. And Leg didn't want any light pollution either, so no nearby infrastructure. And so I had the cameras all running off of solar panels. And here's the real kicker to me. It wasn't just a day. Originally it was for 12 days, but I only got to 11. (laughs) Every sequence seems to have a story like this. Take this eclipse video from northern Queensland. I had to hike about 850 metres on uh, just virgin bush with about 40 kilograms of gear. And I had to sleep on a rock ledge about 100 metres from the top. And then I had to do that last 100 metres just after the start of twilight. And then there's the challenge of getting the right exposure. That light changed by about four stops. Leg uses software that allows him to pre-program the exposures for each shot during the eclipse. So the script is just a little ASCII file and it has a line per exposure. Then you connect your laptop to the camera by USB cable. And then it's hands-free photography. For the total eclipse, I just I made a pledge with myself not to worry about the cameras. That event, like your brain, pretty much just melts and you can't do anything but just sit back with your, your, your mouth wide open. And Legs Photography may provoke the same reaction. The time-lapse process, which condenses three and a half hours of real time into about 15 seconds of footage, brings the night sky to life. Plus, with our eyes, we're looking at a very short window of time, whereas a camera can actually sit there and expose for 30 seconds. So it just it just sucks in that much more light. Leaving the shutter open for 30 seconds allows the camera to pick up faint colors that would be invisible to our eyes. Even in latitudes that can't see the aurora, you still get um, a lot of interesting ionization in the upper atmosphere and ionosphere, which give off light. And you can get some really interesting patterns of green and yellow and red, which change throughout the night. You can see those green and red bands in the middle of this frame. It's only really, I guess, with the cameras being so sensitive now that we're able to pick it up. This sensitivity can also play tricks on our diurnally predisposed minds. For instance, I mistook this for sunrise. That's actually sunset. And... You're actually seeing the the camera become more sensitive through the the sequence and it finishes up actually in a moonlit night. I guess the stars kind of give it away. And then there's this. That's a moonset. Each image that makes up a nighttime sequence like this requires a 20 to 30 second exposure, like this, which actually makes our eyes look pretty good. I'm still in awe that I can see the Milky Way with my naked eye in the, in the middle of the desert in Australia. It's like blazing, and my eye is really a 60th of a second like uh, instrument. If you used the camera with a 60th of a second exposure at night, you wouldn't get much more than this. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.